Hey, what's going on, Todd Shaw, with another episode of The Sawdust Dude. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you so much. Hey, let's talk about the uh, the circular saw real quickly. This is probably like the carpenter's or the uh, uh, handyman, woodworker's right-hand man. This is probably the, this is uh, probably a go-to tool that, that this is one of the first tools that you need. Let me just put it that way. Uh, the seven and quarter uh, circular saw. Uh, you'll hear a lot of these uh, referred to as a skill saw. Um, but no, it's a circular so saw. So you've got a seven and a quarter inch blade on this circular saw. How do I know that? Well, because I've been using one for over 40 years, but also it's got it right here on the sticker. <laughs> so if your product label is missing, uh, chances are that's kind of a across the board standard for all, for all circular saws. It's a seven and a quarter inch blade. So let's. So as I was saying on the front of the saw up here, you've got your uh, your angles. So this thing will cut up to like a 57 degree angle. Now on this particular uh, model here, there are two ways to read what degree you're on. You've got numbers here, and that's indicated by this uh, little arrow right here. And so we want to cut, say a 45, and then that's a 45 degree angle right there. But also it gives you a reading their numbers on here. And then inside this tab, is also where you can read your 45 degrees sensor right there. So I've got numbers here and I've got numbers here, which somebody would say, oh, that's kind of overkill. Well, I say it's kind of a, a good insurance policy to have to make sure that you're on the right degrees and right angles. But what you always want to do when you pick up the saw, get ready to use it, make sure that it is kind of zeroed out and that you've got a, a 90 degree angle here. Uh, on, on, the, on the bed of your saw. Now, anytime that you're working around the blade or how I was just had my fingers around there, you always wanna make sure that it's unplugged. Now, that's just common shop safety. Uh, shop safety, when you're using a, a saw, when you're working or changing out the blades, you, you make sure you want it's unplugged. Number two, you always wanna make sure that your work area is nice and clean. And that way you don't wanna trip over because these saws can kick back. The blade kind of spins back towards you. And if it were to get bind up in the wood, it will kick back. That's why I never stand really squared up to it. I kind of stand with my right foot back. I'm right-handed. So I kind of stand back this way. Now if the saw kicks back, guess what? I'm out of the way. I always hold on to the saw. And from in here, I just let, let go of the, the, uh, the trigger from in here and just keep the saw in my hand if it kicks back and then just guide it away from my leg. Well, let's talk about another thing about safety and that's the blade guard here. Sometimes the spring inside will break and, and you really need to get that replaced. Uh, DeWalt does sell replacement parts online, real easy to get them. And uh, all you have to do is remove the blade and you'll see a, a little spring inside there to figure out how it works. But you always want to make sure that blade guard is functional because if that were to kick back, you don't want that blade to go right and fillet your thigh or, or do uh, an appendectomy on you or anything like that. And I don't say that to scare you. I just say that to give you the confidence to use this thing with wisdom. And let's talk about this bottom one back here. So from in here, you flip this lever up and you can adjust the, uh, the height of your cut. All the way closed like this, this saw will cut about two and a half inches thick. So from in here. And about the only thing that you'll ever have to do is change out the blades on them. And how do you know if the blade needs changing out? Well, let's go back and say this. You can, I've seen these blades get like so dull and, and you're trying to, trying to push through a cut and you're especially something like oak or cherry or hickory is real hard. And so you're trying to push through that blade's just get, getting hot. You can look over to this side of the, of the saw and you can see that blade start distorting. I mean, you can see it, it it'll warp and the blade gets so much heat and once it gets so much heat, it kind of loses uh, 
the edge that it had on the on the uh, carbon tips of the blade and and at that point you just got scrap metal and it's time to replace the blade another little funny story about that is a lot of times when you're cutting and that blade will get hot and bind up in the summertime especially in the south i've had a, a locust a, a wasp and other insects like fly in the blade it's something about the vibration in it and, it and it attracts the bugs it's the weirdest thing I asked an entomologist one time about that, and he's like, I'm really not sure about that. I'm like, well, anyway, it happens. So, you know, that's when, when it's hard to cut and bugs start flying, start flying at your blade, it's time to change your blade. So how do you do that? Glad you asked. Listen and watch. Let's learn together. Let's talk about different blades before we know that the blade for this circular saw is seven and a quarter. How do I know that? Well, because of years of working with this saw, but also because it has it right here on the label up at the top, seven and a quarter. And 99.% of the time, any circular saw, whether it's the wall, um, Makita, whatever you use, it's gonna be a seven and a quarter blade. Now, when you go to your favorite hardware store, and you're gonna see all these blades on the wall. What do you do, what do you do? Well, probably, you gotta ask yourself this question is, what kind of project am I gonna be doing? If you're gonna do some framing, well, guess what? There is a blade, let me find my right blade here. There's a blade for that, and usually that's a 24 tooth blade. And over on the blade, you'll see the size of the blade, seven and a quarter, and then 24T. And that stands for teeth, or toothuses, teeth. <laughs> so it's 24 teeth on, on this blade. And then a lot of times it will say up here at the top, it'll say four framing, and you'll see that up there, all right? And so you don't necessarily have to use a DeWalt blade for a DeWalt. Uh, I've used... Uh, um, Freud blades, uh, they make a Diablo also. Uh, it depends on what kind of work you're doing, is how many teeth, because remember, the more teeth, the finer the cut. So if I'm just cutting two by fours and two by sixes, a 24 tooth blade is great. I wanna go up a little bit and doing a lot of cross cut, something that really, like if I'm cutting plywood, uh, I wanna go up to like a 40 tooth blade, like that, all the way up to a, a 60 tooth, or an 80 tooth blade in this like for an ultra fine finish. So we'll just stay with the nice uh, framing blade. That's what we'll just use for here. Got a little tab, pop that off, pop out that plug. Undo the plastic protection around there. It's a lot easier to do this before you put the blade on. So we'll tear into the packaging. And then take that off. So the blade's ready to install. And uh, so we're ready to go from it here. And so we'll just lay this to the side. Now, how do I get my old blade off? One of the things I wanna do is make sure that my de deck of height, height uh, or deck adjustment, a lot of times you can move it all the way down. That way you can get to the blade easier. Now, with the Walt, they have a little tool in the back of the saw that's made to take this blade off. So you'll need that. And also notice on the front of the saw is a little trigger here. If you ever wonder what that was for, that's to lock out the blade from in here. And so I make sure that my saw is unplugged before I go sticking my fingers down here around the blade. I'm gonna take that little button, I'm gonna move it in, and that's good and locked. From in here, I just take, take my tool and just turn this way. And then this is just righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So from in here, and then my blade comes off. Now it's real helpful if you open this bottom guide. Let me do this all the way back. If this is all the way up like this, this is kind of in the way and you're trying to get that piece is in the way, you're up here trying to do, now that's in the way. It's real helpful just to open this all the way up like that. Roll this back with your hands. So I've got my thumb here and my, my middle finger on that one. This is locked into place and I've already loosened it. So from in there. Now, that's one way with these wrenches here. 
And that's what comes with the saw. Let me just tighten this back up. And so that's good. And that's tight there. Now from here, notice this. Uh, this is pretty much a, a half inch size. A lot of times you'll see half inch size uh, bolts on here. It, it could be a metric size, but from here it's just half inch. A lot of times I'll keep a wrench like this to the side or in my toolbox because of the length. This being longer, my hand's way back here in the back and I have more than using this little tool right here. It's just to have a long wrench that's kind of got that little funky curve to it so it kind of co comes back like this. If it were a straight wrench, you know, just like that, it wouldn't work. But one that's got a little curve like that, I'm sure there's a name for it, but I'm not a mechanic. You're talking to the sawdust dude here, not the sawdust mechanic. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> anyway, so from here, I've got my bolt out. I'm just gonna stick that to the side. You got a little washer like this, and it's got a bevel to it. This side's always gonna be up. The flat side's gonna be towards the blade. Just from in here, I pick the blade up and I slide it out. It's just that simple. Now, here's what you need to do because this'll, uh, you put the blade on backwards, everybody on the job site, if you're a carpenter apprentice and you put a blade on backwards, it will take you years. <laughs> I mean years to live that one down. Put the blade on right, okay? It's happened. I've never done it, but I've had guys where I've asked them to do it, and I'm just like, yeah, you might want to do that one again. A good way to remember it, a lot of times, if it's a brand new blade, they've got the writing like this, all the legal jargons on the back, but the blade, that the point that goes this way, and so I'm gonna put the good looking writing on the outside and that's going to be the right way another way is they've got little arrows on here even on the back just in case and to put a little arrow on here and the best way to remember this on these blades you see these little tips those are the carbide tips on a circular saw and on a um miter saw and table saw the teeth are going to spin back towards you so when i put my teeth in like this put my teeth in <laughs> i still got my teeth so when you put the the teeth on the blade you want to make sure that they spin back towards you and all that's in the right place you take your washer flat side down you just put that on there righty tighty spin it to the right I get it hand tight right there, just like that. I hold down my little trigger again, and then what I do, once it gets to a tight spot, I just give it another little snug. Doesn't have to be super tight. Just one more little push, and then that's tight. And you are in business. But before you start, just double check. Are the teeth spinning back? Are the teeth spinning? Uh, spinning in the right direction and then you are good to go see that wasn't so bad that's what i love about the sawdust dude when you watch you listen you learn now once you got the blade off here's something you can do you kind of get the sawdust build up you can take a brush just kind of run that in there I've seen guys say, just take an air compressor, blow it in there. I don't think OSHA wants you doing that anymore. So uh, let's just use a paintbrush because especially if you're on the job site, just take a moment just to kind of clean that out and you're good to go there. Take an old paintbrush. Don't borrow a new good paintbrush from a painter. Hey, the great thing about these videos, you can keep watching over and over again. You don't remember everything in the first session? Well, just go and practice some more and you're like, oh, wait a minute, what do you say about this? Go back and watch the video again, learn a little bit more, go out in your shop, give it a spin, do some test cuts, do a little practicing. That's the great thing about the sawdust dude. It's about learning the skills for better results. And that all depends on you watching. So keep watching the Sawdust Dude, and I'll see you real soon. Oh, yeah.